Hi Class 101, today is Monday and we are working on a new book. It should be too hot, too cold, keeping body temperature just right. So if you haven't already, please go and read the book first on Trophy 9 and then come back to the video, okay? So pause the video, go watch or read along um, with the video. And when you are done, it's about 15 minutes. Uh, and when you are done, then come back to this video, okay? If you have already read the book and you are ready to go, good job, you're one step ahead. Because what we are doing today is we are talking about the book together, okay? It is a summary that we are kind of going through. The same way we did before, um, I want you to read it on your own. And then kind of we'll just go through the main points of it and discuss it further. And then you will write your book report slash summary, okay? So hot or cold, we started out with obviously just knowing um, the difference between hot and cold, right? If you live in a certain place, it's going to be hotter if you then another place, right? So the more north you are, usually the colder it is, or the, the further away from the equator, so north or south, but um, it's colder and as you get closer to the equator, you get warmer. So in the example, we said um, if you live in Alaska, you need to put on warm clothes. If you live in Florida, you rarely need a jacket. Those are two places in the United States. Alaska is very, very cold. It is year round, it is cold. Florida doesn't really even have a winter at all because it's right on the equator. If you don't know that equator is just that middle line around the earth. So if you're on that equator, it's very warm. Um, we then learned about the temperature of the air and it changing. So shivering and sweating, um, kind of how your body processes that air changing, right? And those temperatures and your body will either shiver, meaning you're cold, right? You're shaking or you will sweat, meaning that you're hot. So you're trying to get that, you're trying to cool off. Um, your body, if you learned anything in this book, you probably learned how smart your body is. Like, I don't think we truly will understand how smart our bodies are until, you know, you keep learning things like this and you're like, oh my gosh, like your brain is just so powerful and it's so smart that it's like, okay, you're hot, so do this to cool down. Oh, okay, you're cold. We'll do this so that you will warm it up where you think you're just kind of doing it for no reason. You're just doing it because you're hot, right? Oh, I'm sweating because it's hot outside, right? That's just what happens. No, your body is telling you to sweat so then you will cool off, right? So um, we learned about bodies and the warmth that they stay at right so a few animals can survive if their bodies are warmer than 114 degrees fahrenheit and no animal can live if their body is below freezing that's just what animals need to survive um, those are extremes so there are two types you are either warm-blooded or you are cold-blooded right what are we as humans Good, we are warm-blooded animals. So, that is also called endothermic. And that means heat from within. So that means that we make our own heat. Our bodies are so smart that they're telling us how to regulate our own heat to, to survive, right? Um, and how do we get heat? Heat comes from food, right? So when you eat, the food then turns into energy or fuel, which will turn into warmth. Um, the food can also turn into fat, which is saved for later. Then that means when we learn about that later in the book, about how fat will keep you extra warm, right? So during winter, a lot of animals 
before they go hibernate like bears or um, I think on that particular slide there are polar bears because the food gets scarce and scarce means there's not a lot of it that they before winter comes they will get big they will eat a lot so then there's a lot more fat which is stored energy to keep them warm longer in winter get them through that winter cold um a normal temp for us is 98.6 fahrenheit that is everything is good you know when you take your temperature um i'm pretty sure you use celsius here right let me just make sure that that's right 98.6 fahrenheit to celsius is 37 celsius so that is um the proper temperature that our body should run out run at um of course you can be a little bit warmer than that you can be a little bit colder than that without being you know worried like i typically run a little bit colder um when i i've been taking my temperature a lot right because of coronavirus so i want to make sure that my health um is good i want to stay healthy so i can keep teaching you guys and hopefully get back to school sometime soon um and when i take my temperature i'm usually actually at 36 um, even 35.8 a lot of times I run just and that's consistent I will usually be a little bit lower it's fine um, just the way my body works in particular but of course until you get to um, what is a fever in Celsius hold on So a fever in Celsius is hotter than 37.5 or 38, no, sorry, sorry, 38 degrees is a low grade fever. 39 degrees is a high grade fever. So when you're in that 38, between 39, then um, there's probably, you know, something wrong at that point. Um, for dogs, that's, it's different. Dogs usually are at 102 Fahrenheit. So let me see what that is to Celsius. That is 38.89. So a dog's regular temperature is almost like a fever for us. They just, they're warmer. Um, for birds, it's 105 Fahrenheit. So even hotter. So all, all warm-blooded animals aren't running at the same temperature. They're running at 40.56 Celsius or 105 Fahrenheit. Um, so they're, they are just warmer. We learn about body size later in the book too, and how that can differ on, um, an impact, how hot or warm you can stay or how cool. So knowing that birds are smaller, they have to stay quite warm. I think to just survive easier, um, versus us, we have a lot more fat muscle, a lot more working for us to create that energy, to create that fuel that will keep us warm and healthy. Um, yeah, so animals that are smaller are going to have higher temps, that's normal. Let's go on. We learn about um, why we get a fever, right? Again, this is our body just being so smart. Um, that a fever isn't just like, I'm, I'm cold, I have a cold or I have an infection or a virus, so now I have a fever. That's just what happens, right? No, everything happens for a reason. Our body actually creates a fever, creates um, a higher body temp, because that fever in turn will kill germs and will um, then make you better, right? Those germs are the things that are making you sick, but they can't survive past a certain temperature. So your body's trying to fight those infections and that bacteria. And so they're like, okay, let's heat up, get all this stuff out of us, and then we will feel better eventually. Um, okay, so that's hot-blooded. Then we learned, we went on, and we learned about cold-blooded. So they depend on heat from the outside. They do not use 
body heat from the inside as a source. So they are called ectothermic. Ectothermic depend on heat from the outside. Ecto, out. Entho, in. Enthothermic. Endothermic is heat from within. Um, so they use sun and shade. They use their natural resources to control their body temperature. Um, cold blooded does not mean that they have cold blood, okay? So it's just what it's called. It's not saying that their, their blood is icy cold or anything like that. Um, examples are obviously an insect. Um, we talked about the butterfly and how it takes heat in through its wings. And so when it, 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 when it needs heat, you'll see the butterfly open it, its wings up and then the heat starts from the wings and then works in towards the body, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we learned about then uh, different parts of our body, right? So like muscles and how when your muscles move, it's creating heat, right? So when you go for a run, you get hot, right? It doesn't matter if it's 10 degrees outside or if it's negative five outside. When you're running, you're, you're heating up. Um, whenever you get your muscles moving, um, yeah, you get warmer. So shivering is when your muscles are moving, they're shaking to create heat. Um, if you play sports, you usually have to stretch before you start running or playing that certain sport because you wanna get your muscles warm. You wanna warm up. So they call it a warm up because you're just doing light, you know, stretching. You're just getting your muscles moving and warm. So then when you start doing intense stuff, they're not like, they don't go from not warm to hot because that would be too much. You have to work your way up. Um, yeah. So we learned about sweating and that is to control temperature as well. So what is sweat? It is water with a little bit of salt. Um, and animals that do that are humans and horses. Um, I don't know if there's more than that, but those are the two that mentioned it in the book. So uh, when we sweat, we are getting the heat out. And then when that sweat dries, it is then cooling us off. Uh, we have 2.6 million sweat glands. That is a lot of sweat glands. So we are prepared to sweat it out. Um, yeah, then we talked about different animals like dogs. They don't sweat unless on their little, little toesies, their little paws. Um, that's the only place that they sweat. But instead of sweating, they pant. You know when a dog's like, like that, <laughs> that is called panting. And that is its way of sweating and it is trying to cool off, okay? So it is interesting because they'll think like a dog is sweating, but it doesn't sweat at all. Um, that's its way, that's its equivalent to us sweating. So when it is hot, you will always see a dog out in the sun, right? Like, like he's, he's trying to cool himself off. Um, we then, so that's kind of muscles, sweat glands. Those are two parts of our body. We went on to learn about blood vessels. And so when you are colder, when you're cold, the small, the colder you are, I'm sorry, the colder you are, the smaller the blood vessel will be. So your blood vessels will shrink as you get colder. Um, that is making it harder for the heat to escape. So if, if that makes sense, if you have a hole, all right, let's say that your gland is this big, there's a lot of room for heat to escape, right? So as you're cold, your body is like, oh no, shrink up and become smaller. So then less heat will escape, right? So it's pretty smart. Um, we talked about a certain, I think it was the walrus in that, in the, in that book, sorry. Um, yeah, walruses, they live in the Arctic and the, obviously the Arctic is very cold. So the water is very cold 
and their blood vessels shrink so small that their skin actually looks almost white. Um, and then when they come out of the water into the warmer air, the blood rushes back to the skin and it turns pink. So that's how small those blood vessels get, is that you can't even, it, you just look white. Like that is insane. Um, so yeah, what else? Fur, hair, and feathers. Then we learned about that part of the body. Obviously we don't have fur or feathers, but we have hair, right? And what is the warmest part of your body? It's, your heat is all right here, right? So that's why in winter, it's really important to wear a beanie or a hat because then you can contain the heat and it keeps you warm. You wanna like not let that heat escape. So um, your head is very warm. In animals, obviously they have fur or feathers to keep themselves warm. Fat is another part of the body that will keep you warm. I already talked about how you usually, or not us, but animals will usually fatten up before winter to keep warmer. Um, really interesting, which I did not know, is that there's brown fat in newborn animals, and it's a special kind of fat that keeps them extra warm, which I thought was really cool because newborns, obviously, they can't really get that big, so they need to stay warm which is why they have that brown fat. Um, blubber is a thing, just like, kind of like fat, is a special thing on certain animals in the ocean who it'll help them keep warm as those ocean temperatures um, get colder. So um, overall, your body size and shape will be a factor in how warm you are. So um, the larger body that you have, it's the longer, the longer it will take for it to either warm up or cool down because you just have more space, right? It's like if you have more wall to paint, it's going, the more wall you have, the longer it is that it's going to take to paint, right? So the bigger your body, it's more, it takes more time for you to either cool off or warm up. So a cat, for instance, a cat is so small, it does not take long. Also, we talked about the position of your body. A cat will usually curl up in a ball to stay warm, to contain its heat. But when it is hot, or sorry, yeah, when it is hot, it wants to cool off. So it'll stretch out. So it'll let everything out, right? It wants to cool off. Um, You'll notice like a lot of times when you're cold, you bundle up, right? You're like, ooh, you're trying to contain that heat. Um, yes. So we talked about sharing warmth um, and the huddling penguins. So they share their body warmth. Um, I'm sure, you know, you've cuddled with your mom or your dad before and you're like cold and your mom or your dad is keep, are keeping you warm, right? because you're just sharing that warmth back, back and forth. Um, and then lastly, we talked about reflecting the sun and how what you wear or on animals, the color of their fur or feathers um, will dictate how hot or cold they can get. So light colors means the cooler you will be. Darker colors means the warmer you will be. Usually in summer, if it's super hot outside, you don't wanna wear all black because black just that sun reflects off of it and you get super hot I don't know if you've ever noticed that if you drive a black car or you have black seats in your car those black seats get way hotter than if you had beige or white or tan seats because the Sun doesn't reflect off of it the same way as those black seats so black leather seats in cars in the, in the summer are horrible because it just gets so hot. So um, we talked about the UV rays. So the sun can be quite dangerous also. You need to wear your sunscreen. It's so strong that it's just, it's powerful, right? So you are going to be doing your book report and your summary. So I wanna know what, you know, 
Well, two different kinds of bloods. You got your warm-blooded, your endothermic, and you got your cold-blooded, your ectothermic. I want to know what normal temperatures are, the smaller you are, the bigger you are, how your body works. And I also want to know those parts of your body. We went over muscles, we went over sweat glands, we went over blood vessels, we went over hair, you know, fur, feathers for animals, um, and fat. So those are some different things in the body that either help create um, warmth or, you know, control your body's temperature. So, and how you get warmed as well, how you cool off or how you warm up. So there's a lot to cover in this summary. Please write our book report. Please write complete sentences, write neatly. And I can't wait to read them guys. Have a great day. Bye.